J.N. Andrews. The Review and Herald, February 15, 1870. It is quite generally understood that the Seventh-day Adventists are believers in the perpetuity of spiritual gifts. We do believe that the scriptures plainly reveal the office and work of the Holy Spirit, which office and work can never cease while man remains upon probation. Now it is plain that those who reject the work of the Spirit of God under the plea that the scriptures are sufficient do deny and reject all that part of the Bible which reveals the office and work of the Holy Spirit. The object of spiritual gifts is to maintain the living work of God in the church. One of the chief gifts of the Spirit of God that he has placed in the New Testament church is the gift of prophecy. Joel 2.28, Acts 2, 1-4, 17, and 18, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1-31, 14, verses 1-5, Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 13. This gift the Bible connects with the closing work of this dispensation. Revelation 12 17, 14 12, 19 10. Spiritual gifts do not therefore cease to be of importance in the sight of God, nor in that of his true people. And that message which is to accomplish the perfecting of the saints and to fit them for translation has the Spirit of God connected with it, and speaking out in the management of its work. James White, commenting on Revelation 16.6, James White says, Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, December 2, 1862. It may be asked how the last generation of the wicked can be said to have shed the blood of saints and the prophets since the last generation of saints are not to be slain. A reference to Matthew 23, 34 and 35, 1 John 3, verse 15, will explain. These scriptures show that guilt attaches to motive no less than to action, and no generation ever formed a more determined purpose to give the saints to indiscriminate slaughter than the present one will not far in the future. See chapter 12, verse 17, 13, verse 15. In motive and purpose, they do shed the blood of saints and prophets. The term prophets shows that the spirit of prophecy will be revived and that there will be prophets in the remnant church. A word to the little flock, page 13. Quote, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. End quote. Acts 2, verses 17 to 20. Quote, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, end quote, and the disciples were, quote, all with one accord in one place, end quote, filled with the Holy Ghost, quote, Peter, standing up with the eleven, end quote, quoted the above scripture from the prophecy of Joel. His object was to show that the marvelous work which was wrought in the disciples at that time was a subject of prophecy and the work of God. I conclude that there is not one second advent believer who will take the ground that all of the prophecy of Joel quoted by Peter was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. For there is not the least evidence that any part of it was then fulfilled, only that part which related to the pouring out of the Holy Ghost. We cannot believe that the signs of the sun and the moon, etc., were seen on that day, or that there were any having visions or dreaming among them at that exciting hour, for there is no proof of any such thing. A part of this prophecy was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, and all of it is to be fulfilled, quote, in the last days, saith God, end quote. 
dreams and visions are among the signs that precede the great and noble days of the Lord. And as the signs of that day have been and still are fulfilling, it must be clear to every unprejudiced mind that the time has fully come when the children of God may expect dreams and visions from the Lord. I know that this is a very unpopular position to hold on this subject, even among Adventists. But I choose to believe the word of the Lord on this point rather than the teachings of men. I am well aware of the prejudice in many minds on this subject, but as it has been caused principally by the preaching of popular Adventists and the lack of a correct view of the subject, I have humbly hoped to cut it away with the sword of the Spirit from some minds at least. We will bear it in mind that these dreams and visions are to be in the quote, last days, end quote. As there cannot be any days later than the last, it is certain that we may expect just such revelations until Christ appears in the clouds of heaven. I know that it is a very popular opinion among Adventists that there was nothing more to be revealed by visions after John closed up the revelation in A.D. 96. But if this opinion is correct, then the last days ended while John was on the Isle of Patmos. The Bible is a perfect and complete revelation. It is our only rule of faith and practice. But this is no reason why God may not show the past, present, and future fulfillment of His Word in these last days by dreams and visions, according to Peter's testimony. True visions are given to lead us to God and His written Word. But those that are given for a new rule of faith and practice, separate from the Bible, cannot be from God and should be rejected. Quote, Despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. End quote. Quote, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. End quote. Isaiah 8.20 